Today's video is the third in Miss E's home sexuality series titled The Link Between Homosexuality and Mental Illness with a description that states, quote, Mental illness is much more prevalent among those with same-sex attraction. It's high time this link was investigated without being pressured into conforming to political correctness, end quote. So let's get to it. Is mental illness more common among homosexuals? When you've been making videos as long as I have, you cover a lot of issues, and this is most definitely true for the topic of this video. Years ago, I made a concerted effort to find the proof that homosexuality was innate. Instead, I increasingly found the opposite, until I eventually questioned whether homosexuality was a form of mental illness. This leads me to this video, a product of years of research into so-called homosexuality, better described as same-sex attraction, a type of paraphilia. Well, if anyone can force £10 of crap into a £5 bag, Mr E here would be champion above all others. The number of baseless assertions spat out that need addressing here are many. First of all, correlation does not equal causation, a basic fact anyone proficient in science understands. The question as to whether homosexuals have higher rates of psychopathology is irrelevant to your religious claims about natural laws and such. You need to show a causal link with peer-reviewed research as I did in demonstrating how abuse resulted in increased risk behaviour in my previous responses. Secondly, what research did you carry out? In your previous videos, the closest you came to research is using a study from the wrong continent and an interview with a singular authority with their personal opinion. Scientific vigour, that most certainly is not. Third, how does not being innate equal something being a form of psychopathology? Language, art, commerce, architecture, the list goes on and on. None of these are innate, yet they are not a form of psychopathology either. Fourth, many forms of psychopathology are innate. This one is seemingly as damaging as your ignorance of correlation not equaling causation, since it reveals a lack of the most rudimentative research. Fifth, if homosexuality is a form of paraphilia, then so is heterosexuality. Now I get that you don't like that term, but thankfully the scientific discipline is not bent to your personal sense of offence. That's what, five falses in the space of 48 seconds, 41 if you subtract the length of your intro. That's more than one lie every 10 seconds. Most creationists I deal with have a better grasp of the science than you do. With a subject this vast, and with the inevitable ideological attempts to derail with logical fallacies, trolling and outright hostility, I'll need to start with a quick summary of what I've previously covered, because I simply don't have the time to go off on tangents I've already addressed. Once this is established, all those that try to derail this video with any kind of fallacious appeal or hostility will be dealt with accordingly. I've already proven that homosexuality was never scientifically declassified as a mental illness. Rather, this took place through a vote in leading mental health bodies that were subverted and pressurised. Thus, this had nothing to do with science, and to this day, not only has no science been conducted to back up this decision, but every single attempt to argue that homosexuals were born this way has been inconclusive. In other words, they were dead ends. When faced with this, the reaction from apologists is primarily twofold argue that all sexuality is fluid and therefore heterosexuality is just one form of sexuality, or even repressed sexuality that itself is a type of mental illness. The other response is to muddy the definition of mental illness. Some might recall that I previously pointed out that the aim of the gay movement in the 70s was either to co-opt the mental health professions or discredit them. So whenever anyone exposes the junk science driving this agenda, apologists fall back onto the latter. Sure enough, in my video How Homosexuality Was Declassified as a Mental Illness, some reverted to the second response, where definitions for words and concepts were muddied. However, I made it clear that I would not address this until I made a video I was planning to make on this very issue. Here is that video. 
Right, well back in reality all you actually did was actively lie about the definition of mental health and demonstrate a complete ignorance of the Leona Tyler principle and how it operates. Homosexuality was declassified as a mental illness because there was no research demonstrating it to be a mental illness. Therefore, by the Leona Tyler Principle, which states that the American Psychological Association's public stance should be firmly founded in science, demanded that they abandon the pseudoscientific notion that homosexuality was a mental illness, at least until a time where it could be demonstrated to be one, if ever. I have supplied references for all the research I have cited throughout my video responses, and unlike you, demonstrated how I'd actually read said research, not simply grabbed it based on the titles of online blog posts like yourself. Now it's been over a month since I posted my original video response to you and you've made no efforts to address my criticism or correct your egregious errors, instead settling for slinging mud at anyone besides me who attempts to bring said facts to your attention. I hope this is because you're working on a detailed response, but knowing your lack of intellectual integrity, I won't hold my breath. In short, you haven't done any of what you just asserted you have, an objective and demonstrable fact anyone can verify for themselves. The very first thing to note is that mental illness among people that identify as homosexual is so widespread that not even bastions of leftist propaganda like the BBC will deny it. LGBT people still suffer with higher levels of depression, anxiety, addictions and suicide. I know because I'm one of them. Soho used to be a place that I would come to to get out of my head. Today, in recovery, I'm more likely to be here sipping a cup of herbal tea. Why is it that so many LGBT people suffer with mental health problems? Likewise, you get articles in The Guardian, highlighting disproportionately high levels of depression, self-harm and suicide among people with same-sex attraction. In one article, prominent neo-Marxist and gay activist Owen Jones cites a study by LGBT charity Stonewall, stating that 44% of people identifying as LGBT have considered suicide and 42% have sought help for mental distress. Owen Jones also mentions a 2016 study stating that, quote, Drug use among LGB people is seven times higher than the general population. Binge drinking is twice as common among gay and bisexual men. And substance dependency is significantly higher, end quote. Sorry, you pronounced cultural Bolshevism wrong there, Mr. Ego. Either that or you were just trying to cover up the Nazi origins for your piece of shit narrative. It's poisoning the well. It's an ancient tactic perfected by the Nazis in their rise to power and adopted firmly into nationalist rhetoric in the West and needs to be called out for the shit it is every time it's used. Owen Jones is a socialist, not a Marxist. There's a major difference even though the right, especially in America, likes to pretend otherwise. So why don't you stop spouting shit and start dealing with the evidence? We obviously have to take any statistics from the left with a pinch of salt, because without exception, they're either cherry-picked, or if they are genuine, twisted for political capital. In this case, these statistics are true enough. Need I even say confirmation bias? The line here is rather literally, statistics applied by the left are always wrong, unless I have some use for them, in which case they're right. But as evidenced in my previous video, the issue goes beyond that. Previously, Mr. Ego complained about the fact that a study on children comparing those raised in heterosexual and non-heterosexual households was criticised for shoddy methodology, because apparently attempts to uphold the investigator standards of science is a leftist conspiracy. Anyway, I explained the major flaw in the study, but I also built on that in noting how said study was 1 of 79 evaluated by Cornell University. What they found in their meta-analysis of said 79 studies was that only 4, so 5.1% of all available data, suggested that children raised in non-heterosexual households fared differently than those raised in heterosexual households. The meta-analysis also noted issues with said studies, such as the one Mr. Ego brought up, which failed to account for extraneous variables and therefore rendered its own results invalid as a comparison between heterosexual and non-heterosexual parents. So when Mr. Ego cries foul at the left apparently cherry-picking the data, this seems to be part of some deep-rooted projection on his part where he attempts to pass off his own methodological flaws onto those he's critiquing. 
Also, statistics should always be scrutinised, no matter where they come from. Read the original report if you can, as mistakes can be made even by honest professionals. And if government sources like the CDC or NHS are important to you, they also show higher risk of mental health problems among people with same-sex attraction, despite being watered down with politically correct claims that homosexuals are generally normal. Finally, Mr E references something that isn't a bloody online blog post written with pure conjecture. They're not journal articles either, but it's a step in the right direction. So let's take a look at the apparent politically correct claims Mr E loves to harp on about, starting with the Centre for Disease Control. Quote, However, ongoing homophobia, stigma, negative and usually unfair beliefs, and discrimination, unfairly treating a person or group of people, can have negative effects on your health. Research also shows that, compared to other men, gay and bisexual men have higher chances of having major depression, bipolar disorder, and generalised anxiety disorder. End quote. Okay, well that seemed to focus more on the research than simple political correctness. How about the NHS? They state, quote, Poor levels of mental health among lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans, LGBT people have often been linked to experiences of homophobic and transphobic discrimination and bullying. Other factors such as age, religion, where you live or ethnicity can add extra complications to an already difficult situation. End quote. Hmm... I'm beginning to notice a pattern here. Both organisations talk about and reference peer-reviewed scientific research, demonstrating the validity of their claims, whilst Mr E seeks to simply cast it out as political correctness. I guess if one wishes to rename science political correctness, then that would be accurate. Otherwise, there seems to be little more than an excuse to ignore the evidence provided, to preserve a certain someone's bigoted and completely lacking opinion of homosexuality. When you consider that the number of people attracted to the same sex is only around 2%, despite the usual cherry-picked data over-inflating this, this headline was supplied to you by the shit smears over at Breitbart. That's right, we're back to nationalist blogs. Do note the facts that Breitbart links to the second paper that they're touting as the official data, but not to the original paper they're trying to prop it up against. I wonder why. But let's start with the second set of data which was generated as part of the annual population survey in 2016 and processed by the Office for National Statistics to be published in 2017. Now it puts the number of people who self-identify as either gay or bisexual at 4.1%. Hang on a second, what was that Mr E said just now? The number of people attracted to the same sex is only around 2%. This 4.1% statistic was even in the Breitbart article he referenced. Like when you're being outsized by Breitbart, that's a good sign that you should likely pack it in and go back to complaining about the Star Wars movies. Even the Times article headline you flashed on screen making the 2% claim disagrees with what Mr. E is saying. Not only was the CDC survey conducted in 2013, but it actually put the number of people who identify as either homosexual or bisexual because, reminder, bisexual people are also attracted to people of the same gender at 2.3% standard and 3.1% for ages 18 to 44. Note the fact that the inclusion of ages 23 to 44 likely had an impact on lowering said percentage. You can't compare one sample consisting of 18 to 44 year olds to one consisting of 18 to 22 year olds. The data sets are not a match. But the main problem is this. Neither the CDC nor the APS measured sexual attraction. Instead, they measured labels of identity. Now let's go on to look at the study Mr. Ian Breitbart are claiming inflated the actual numbers and see what it was they studied. Now this paper took me a while to find since neither Breitbart nor Mr. E bothered referencing it. I only found the data thanks to a link from an article on The Independent being an Ipsos Mori survey for the BBC. Here are the results, and as noted in the Breitbart article, only 66% of people aged 18 to 22 asked were solely attracted to people of the opposite sex, meaning that 34% of respondents chose another option. So why the difference? There's a massive chasm between 4.1 and 34% after all. Well, the key is in the question. Know the fact that nowhere in the Ipsos Mori study were labels used. This is important as labels carry weight with them, they're not neutral, they have a meaning, a historical background. 
And we can see this in an earlier 2015 YouGov study, which actually took both approaches on the matter. They first of all asked respondents which of the following titles best describe their identity, heterosexual, gay slash lesbian, bisexual, other, and prefer not to say. The results? For 18 to 22 year olds, only 12% identified as either gay slash lesbian or bisexual, whilst 83% identified as heterosexual. They then got the same participants to vary their sexuality on a 6 point Kinsey scale, with 0 being completely heterosexual and 6 being completely homosexual. Guess what happened? Only 46% rated themselves as completely heterosexual, 37% less than the 83% who said the term most accurately described themselves, and only 4% of the study went for no sexuality or don't know. That means 50% of the sample place themselves somewhere between mostly heterosexual and completely homosexual. So we went from 12% to 50% in simply changing the question. Now which is more accurate in discussing people with same gender attraction? Questions focusing on the actual attraction without labels, or ones using labels that have a historical and cultural weight behind them? So we see the reason for the earlier difference. It's not some leftist conspiracy, but the fact that questions are not asked in some vacuum free from social impact. Homosexuals are vastly overrepresented when it comes to mental illness, including acknowledged figures by gay rights and left-wing sources. I'm sure many can guess what this is blamed on by Owen Jones and the left. Yep, you guessed it. Homophobia and discrimination. Just when you think that this can't get any more predictable. Well, it's only predictable because it's an understood fact, having been so for a long time and thus is frequently noted by researchers and human rights organisations as a means to battle pseudoscience. This is like a creationist calling an evolutionary biologist predictable because they'll always bring up the phylogenetic tree of life. Oddly enough, when you have evidence of your position, there's no need to go out and find new evidence. Now I guess that's something that's just too difficult for you to wrap your head around, but thankfully science is not limited by your incredulity. Owen Jones and The Independent cited a statistic claiming that when British people voted for Brexit, they suddenly lost their minds and started attacking gay people, leading to a 147% rise in homophobic hate crimes. I've covered this false reporting before, so all I'll say here is that this is based on the biased notion of hate crimes that rarely, if ever, lead to convictions and involve people calling a hate crime hotline, something that diverts resources away from genuine issues like, oh, I don't know, catching real criminals. So wait, a crime isn't a crime so long as it was partially motivated on the victim's characteristics? I think Ms. E has confused hate speech with hate crime, something I've seen a lot in recent years. A hate crime is not some special subset of criminal justice dealing with offences specific to a certain demographic like hate speech, but in saying that, even hate speech is an extension of other laws, such as incitement to violence. Hate crime, however, refers to a criminal act that has been identified to have been motivated, at least in part, on the basis of a person's characteristic. So assault as a crime becomes a hate crime when said assault goes ahead on the basis of, say, perceived sexuality. Destruction of property is a crime, but it's a hate crime when said destruction is carried out on the basis of, say, ethnicity. Hate crimes are real crimes with or without the addition of the hate aspect, so they're crimes which would have to be looked into regardless, but we as a society note that intent plays a part in a crime. There's a big difference between stealing to feed your family and stealing because your victim is disabled and you think disabled people shouldn't have nice things. Even hate speech is an extension of other laws, such as incitement to violence. The fact that Mr. E doesn't understand all of this shows once more that he doesn't have a clue as to what he's talking about. No surprise there. The left is nothing if not consistent, so blaming discrimination and homophobia on the link between same-sex attraction and mental illness is exactly what you'd expect. But a comparison with countries where same-sex attraction has been normalised for longest, like Denmark and the Netherlands, shows no significant improvement in the average mental health of those identifying as homosexual. This matters because it's yet more evidence that there's another cause for this mental illness, although the left will fight tooth and nail to prevent anyone from finding out what it is. 
Well, that's funny because in my first video, I demonstrated the exact opposite. A study and subsequent report carried out by San Francisco State University titled Supportive Families, Healthy Children, Helping Families with Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual and Transgender Children Compare the Impact of Growing Up in Supportive versus Rejective Households on Young LGBT Plus Adults Age 21 to 25. They found that LGBT plus individuals from households who rejected them on the basis of being LGBT plus were quote, more than eight times as likely to have attempted suicide, nearly six times as likely to report high levels of depression, more than three times as likely to use illegal drugs, and more than three times as likely to be at high risk of HIV and sexually transmitted diseases, end quote. As for the source of your claims, they come from a LifeSite blog post, LifeSite being a conservative Christian cesspool and nothing more. Here is revealed that the research you are referencing is from a 1988 study. To say that the social environment has changed in the US, Denmark and the Netherlands since then would be a vast understatement. The Netherlands only banned discrimination on the basis of sexuality in 1994, followed by Denmark two years later in 1996. So these places were not utopias for gay people in the 80s, 90s and much of the noughties and being better than the US is a very low bar to set. The fact is that personality disorders, compulsive behaviour, high risk activity, delusional beliefs and every other area professionals and laymen alike associate with mental illness can all be found in droves among those with same sex attraction. Powerful drugs like crystal meth and GBL are increasingly popular in the gay male community. Antidote, the UK's only LGBT-specific drugs and alcohol service, has seen a dramatic rise in the number of people seeking help. Some people would say, you know, they're using drugs, you know, it's not the end of the world, but, but for some people it really, really destroys their lives, doesn't it? Well, we see people that have lost their jobs, lost relationships, lost their homes. Um, you know, it has a devastating effect on people's mental health. I think it's important that we start looking at some of those underlying issues that, you know, um, people are using drugs on. So what's causing this and why is it so prevalent? I've already touched on the answer to this in my video when degenerates take over society. Denial of reality is pivotal to identifying mental illness and this leads to destructive behaviour. Mentally ill people don't want to be told their delusions are wrong. They can be so adamant about their delusions that they become hysterical, depressed and hostile when others don't accept their false interpretation of reality. It's been some time since I've talked about teleology, but I'm going to revisit it here as it demonstrates perfectly why same-sex attraction is a manifestation of mental illness. Teleology is the conclusion that everything has a certain function that fits a purpose or goal. You don't have to believe in God to accept this because it's self-evident. You don't even need to rely on science because reason alone is enough. Everything in nature has a function, whether you think it evolved or was created by a divine force. It doesn't matter either way because if you think something like the human hand doesn't have a specific function, then there's something wrong with you. In the case of hands, they're functional for gripping, holding, pushing and feeling. We can also use them for self-defense if necessary. If we deviate too much from the function of our hands or overstretch their capabilities, this can lead to harm. What if, for example, we put our hands in a blender or on a hot surface? This doesn't match their function, so we shouldn't be surprised when this harms us. Biology, physiology and psychology are interlinked. There's no separation between the three, and everything about our anatomy has a function related to these areas. Humans have invented lots of creative ways to stretch the limits of their functionality, but that doesn't mean they can do whatever they like, and there are consequences for thinking otherwise. Self-evident is the pseudoscientific way to say, I have no evidence to support my conclusion, but I'm going to assert it anyway. And true, whilst it does not require a god, it does however require a religion since teleology posits a supernatural conscious force driving the universe, the intent behind the intended. No supernatural conscious force, no intent, no intent, no teleology. Teleology is religious by design. 
So, well done on going ahead and admitting that you have no fucking argument, just raw assertion disguised as something more than it actually is. I mean, the pseudoscientific garbage that just came out here went well beyond simple political blindness. You may as well be talking about the chakras or the great Atlantean Martian war. Mr. E, you've gone full woo. I'd like to let you know a little something about evolution. There is no planning. Take tea for example. Tea first evolved by scales surrounding the outside of the mouth of our ancestors, slowly migrating further and further into the mouth. Evolution via natural selection works on the basis of making do with what we have to explore entirely original avenues. If everything has a purpose, I'd like to see you explain the recurrent laryngeal nerve in giraffe. This is a nerve which starts and ends within millimetres of each other, yet because it evolved prior to the evolution of the neck, it evolved around the aortic arch of the heart. Now, this is no problem for fish since they have no neck, but to have the same nerve in a giraffe that starts in the brain, comes all the way down into the chest cavity and back up to a spot mere millimetres away from where it started and to claim that this has a purpose, when it doesn't, just makes you look like a complete fool. You've taken my assessment that you're just as bad as any creationist and verified it, so well done. And here's another thing that you've got to explain if you believe teleology is true and homosexuality is against teleology, and that is, why are there so many pleasure cells packed into the anus? If everything is by design and intent, why are there so many pleasure cells there? Either they are there by intent, in which case it seems that homosexuality isn't against teleology, or they're not, in which case teleology isn't true. Which is it? So, what about same-sex attraction? Does this suit human functionality? If we were being honest, the answer would most certainly be no. Science and reason demonstrate that there are two sexes that are anatomically different yet complementary, and this serves the purpose of reproduction. We call this functionality sexual dimorphism, and the health implications that come with acting on same-sex attraction are what apologists dismiss as homophobia and discrimination. But this is what happens when you deny teleology. Once more, I find myself unable to cover everything I want to address, so I'll revisit this topic in the future. For now, and if you can stomach it, look up gay bowel syndrome. Word of warning, however, don't do this if you have a weak stomach. In one study, 35% of gay men suffered with anal incontinence, exactly what you'd expect from an act of rectal penetration that defies teleology. This alone proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that same-sex attraction is a sign of mental illness. Always noted in my previous video with actual evidence, it shows us that failure to teach comprehensive sex education results in people getting themselves hurt. Sexual injuries aren't that uncommon, even for heterosexual people. Then again, I guess you never really have to worry about that. Also, sexual dimorphism as your argument? Really? Fun fact, there's no such thing as a strict sexual dimorphism. This is a fact science has known for a long time, yet for some reason people still can't seem to get their heads around it. Sex is a categorization given to a person based off various physical aspects, including yet not limited to genitalia, chromosomes, internal reproductive organs, hormones, gametes, and brain structure. No one quality dictates sex, and the idea of a perfectly dimorphic individual is a myth. All of us have one or more of these qualities away from the edges of the spectrum. If you think there is such a thing as a perfect man or woman, you are living in a fantasy world. This comes as a result of not only our evolutionary heritage, i.e. the very evolution of sexual traits, but also how development plays out during gestation. We call the most extreme cases intersex, so this is somewhat misleading in my opinion since we are all of some random cocktail of sexual traits. The most extreme cases account for 2% of all live births in spite of systematic medical sterilization carried out during childhood, a vile practice that has thankfully been challenged. That's why we have cases of people with XY chromosomes giving birth to one or even more perfectly healthy children. Biology does what it wants regardless of your ignorance and your protest. It's not restricted to your arbitrary moral dictates or your notion of one form of humanity. 
Now that's a fact you'll have to learn to live with as currently with three videos down and you've not managed to support a single one of your points, let alone demonstrate the core point that homosexuality is a mental illness. Things are not looking so good for you, Mr. Ego. Hi there, I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Daniel Martinez, and Alexander Williams. Your support has ensured this channel's ability to grow over the years. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe, hit the bell icon, and follow Essence of Thought on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, a humanist organization dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilizing language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's work to keep the space one which upholds the values of humanism. Thank you.